And the Oscar goes to Paper Man, John Cars. In 2012, animator and director John Cars stepped on the stage of the Academy Awards for his win with Paper Man, the best animated short of the year. This was the first time Disney had won in that category in 43 years. Paper Man was both an exquisite story and a technological breakthrough for animation at the time, when computer-generated 3D animation had become such a norm. Its promise of something new and exciting coming to animation was thrilling for fans who had grown tired of the formulaic look of animated films from Disney and Pixar and most of the other big animation studios. In a matter of a six and a half minute runtime, Paper Man looked to change the animation industry. But did it really? My name's Josh Taylor, this is Modern Mouse, and today I want to talk about Paper Man 10 years later. What it achieved, and if it actually fulfilled the promise of changing the animation industry. During Walt Disney's time, Mickey Mouse and the Silly Symphony shorts are what made Walt Disney famous. Short animation had always been what brought Disney to the dance, and it allowed the company to expand to full-length feature films, live-action films, theme parks, and more. But as the company grew, short-form animation was no longer a priority, and by the 1960s, the company was rarely making any short-form animation. Outside of the Disney Channel show House of Mouse, that stayed true until the mid-2000s, when Disney opted to bring back the shorts program to feature them before their theatrical films. Testing out new software in 2007, the classic goofy how-to shorts were revived with How to Hook Up Your Home Theater, which played before the second National Treasure film, it was fun to see Goofy in this format again, but nothing about this short really blew anyone away. This was mostly an experiment with new ways to animate, something that short animation had been used for at Pixar since its beginnings. In 2011, The Ballad of Nessie accompanied the Winnie the Pooh film, something that went under the radar since many people opted not to see Pooh Bear in theaters. The short was designed to be an homage to classic Disney. The design of Nessie looks like a child version of the Reluctant Dragon. Backgrounds were made to look like they were designed by Mary Blair. The narration makes it feel like Johnny Appleseed or Casey at the Bat. It's a wonderful short, but again, it didn't make waves. Disney's short animation program really didn't make a true comeback until 2012 with John Carr's animated short, Paper Man. Originally inspired to make a story about the connections between strangers at Grand Central Station in New York City, John Cars brought the idea to Disney after he was hired to be an animator on Tangled. After several attempts to get it off the ground between his time at Disney and his time before that working at Blue Sky Animation, it was finally greenlit after Tangled was completed since Disney truly had no idea what to come up with for the opening of their next major feature film. Now with the go-ahead, Cars was collaborating on developing the story and finding new and unique ways to do animation. He found the software program Meander, which allowed animators to create this hybrid of traditional hand-drawn animation with the more contemporary 3D computer-generated animation. Creating a new technique called Final Line Advection, the film was animated first on computers in a 3D style before animators hand drew over the 3D, adding in details by hand and even erasing some of the computer generated details if needed. Rather than having animation departments for hair or effects, which was a process adopted from Pixar and had become a norm at Disney, Animators were allowed to play beyond the boundaries they'd normally been confined to, going back to old ways where animators were given a character or a scene to create. The short would accompany Wreck-It Ralph in theaters. It's the story of George and Meg, who are actually never named on screen. They meet in passing at a train station on their way to work in the 1940s. Meg leaves a red lipstick imprint on one of George's work papers after the wind picks it up, and blows it into her face. 
After noticing that Meg works in the building across from him, George tries to get her attention with a number of paper airplanes, but fails. She leaves her office and he chases after her. It isn't until halfway through the short that magic brings the paper to life, and they follow each of our protagonists, bringing them together once again at the train station. I have a serious bias for this short. I went with a bunch of my friends to go see Wreck-It Ralph, and after that movie ended, all I could think about was Paperman. I've seen plenty of interviews where people have said they were blown away by Steamboat Willie and its sound, or by the technicolors of the Silly Symphony cartoons, and I never actually experienced that myself. Until Paperman. It made me want to buy another ticket just to see this short. It absolutely blew me away, and at a time period where animation had felt kind of stale, this was a breath of fresh air. The musical score by Christoph Beck brought a wonderful romance to it. The black and white look made it feel like an instant classic. The story was the right blend of magic and emotion that has always made Disney great. But the biggest reason to see this film was how it was pushing the art form forward. For the first time since 1969, Disney won an Academy Award for its short animation. There was this new excitement about it and what would come from Disney. Would the Meander software continue to get used or could that translate to feature film animation as well? Paperman gave animators and animation fans something to grab onto. It promised that art was once again changing, but did that change really last? For many, including myself, we were hoping to see this translate to big feature films at Disney. I remember seeing concept artwork for films like Big Hero 6 and Zootopia, which felt like they would or could be based in this process. Whether or not they were in conception, those films would eventually get made in the computer-generated realm that Disney had become all too familiar with. In fact, as of recording this video, Disney has yet to commit to a full-length animated feature with any style other than what they've been doing ever since making Tangled in 2010. They have had small bits of hand-drawn looking animation sprinkled in. One of the most loved is during the song You're Welcome from Moana, but the Meander software gave hope for so much more than that. What Paperman changed at Disney was actually unintentional, but possibly just as good as what we initially thought. John Carr's have been part of the animation world at Blue Sky and Pixar and Disney, and he'd worked in character development, but he'd never been a director. He'd never been a story writer. He'd never been given opportunities to helm a project until Paperman. Both Disney and Pixar had their handful of animation directors, and while there were a few rare instances here and there that allowed other people to move into those roles, they were never allowed to change the processes of the animation studios. Thanks to his Oscar win and the buzz that surrounded it, a brand new program was created at Disney, which allowed anyone that worked at Disney Animation to pitch a short film and take the director's seat. This gave first-time directors the opportunity to play with animation styles and storytelling techniques. The shorts program has since given us a variety of amazing art, including Feast, Us Again, Far From the Tree, and the Disney Plus collection called Short Circuit. Pixar would follow suit as well, giving opportunities to first timers. Now we not only see a variety of animation styles consistently, but we're seeing stories from all walks of life. Whether it's a story about coming out to your parents, how homes see cycles of life and death, the family dynamics of a Chinese-Canadian family, or what it feels like to be the only woman in an all-male workplace. Even outside of Disney's umbrella, which is what we do here, I mean, that's what the logo is, animation styles have been diversifying. Sony Animation had a breakthrough with Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and they created one of the best original films of 2021 with Mitchells vs. the Machines. Even DreamWorks, who have been consistently relying on their franchise characters, branched out in 2018 with the short Bird Karma. Of course, there's also a myriad of smaller animation studios worldwide who are getting wider distribution and being seen now on streaming platforms. 
in 2012, Paper Man was a breath of fresh air because it didn't look like anything that animation had become. But 10 years later, we're seeing a ton of different animation styles, whether that's in the theaters or streaming at home. There are a ton of first time storytellers and directors getting their chance because of Paper Man. The short may not have had the impact like we thought it would have, but I think that the animation industry and the impact of the short has created something even better. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out my other 10 years later videos. The playlist is right here. Uh, and also just check out this other video that might interest you over here. As always, my friends, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this one. Until next time, keep moving forward.